Hey, Advent family, sure am missing you these days. I mean, it's been a long time since we've been able to gather together in person for worship and for life groups. And it's just not the same around here without seeing your faces. And I certainly look forward to the day when we're able to do that. The longer we've gone into this period of social distancing and COVID shutdown, the more I've thought about this period of time and kind of been reminded of something from way back in the history of Israel. In 586 BC, the southern kingdom of Israel, Judah, was conquered by the Babylonians. And when they conquered Jerusalem, they ransacked it, they destroyed the temple where the Israelites believed God lived. And then, in order to maintain and sustain this newly annexed part of their empire, the Babylonians carted off into exile all the leaders and scholars and artisans to make sure that there was really nobody left behind who was educated enough or skilled enough in leadership to foment any kind of revolution or rebellion against Babylon. And so separated from their families, separated from the land that they believed God gave to them, and especially the temple that where they believed God lived, where they all of their worship centered around that temple. Separated from all that, the Israelites went through a very dark time grief and, and lamentation. In fact, the book of Lamentations was written during that period of exile in Babylon. And in that period of time, they cried out to God for deliverance, for rescue, for the ability to return home. And God made them a promise in that time. God heard their cries and made them a promise. And that promise, I'm going to read to you from Jeremiah chapter 29. I'm going to begin with verse 10 and read verse 11 as well. This is what the Lord says. You will be in Babylon for 70 years, but then I will come and do for you all the good things I have promised, and I will bring you home again. For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans for good and not for disaster, to give you a future and a hope. Now, I don't think for a second that this period of COVID, social distancing and shutdown is going to last for 70 years, but things aren't going to go back to the normal that we left early in March for a, a pretty long time. We won't get to experience the same things. Things are going to be different. Even when we're able to gather in person, there's going to be all sorts of new measures we put in place to keep people safe. But in the middle of all of this, I can hear God's promise ring through the centuries and, and land on us today. It's still a promise that, that rings true for us, and that is God has a plan. That plan is to prosper us and not for disaster, to give us a hope and a future. I am confident that the, the best days of Advent are still ahead of us, and, and God is going to move in our midst and show us some amazing things. Right now, it's not so much fun, but God is always faithful. God is not going to leave us or forsake us, and God's going to carry us through this difficult time. I hope that provides some hope for you in the midst of all this, and I can't wait until we can gather again and I can see your faces. In the meantime, let's pray. Gracious God, I'm so grateful for your faithfulness to us, for the fact that you are with us in good times and that you carry us through difficult times. I pray that you would prove your faithfulness over and over to us again. And Lord, until we can meet again, we pray that you keep us connected through the power of your Holy Spirit, the waters of baptism, remind us that we are brothers and sisters of each other and we are never alone. We pray this in Jesus' name.